Hey everybody, welcome back. This is gonna be another project video, and in this video, we're gonna go ahead and make a crossbody fanny pack style purse. I never thought fanny packs would come back into uh, popular bags that women carry and that kind of thing. I thought that might have been a fad that was gone behind us, but apparently they're back and, and there's a few craftsmen making a few style, different styles of these. This is our attempt in the shop at making a fanny pack. I'm actually really happy with the bag. I think it went together really well. The patterns work really well. I've actually been working on this pattern for the last few months. I actually made my wife one a few months ago she's been carrying that bag and she really really likes it she tends to carry this one and i've seen a lot of ladies carrying these these type of bags here across their body and it just kind of keeps everything up close you don't have a bag kind of hanging out in the way especially for moms with young kids you kind of need your hands free to to do other things and so this bag kind of stays up close and it's got enough room in there for a wallet keys cell phone those sort of things um, and uh, i went ahead and made her this new one my main deal was trying to be sure that i could turn this bag right side out because you will make it inside out when you assemble this bag and this way I wanted to use three four ounce leather so that we could add some tooling on here and and be sure that it would actually turn and it does uh, you can turn this bag uh, right side out fairly easily and it works really well um, so we're gonna get started in this video right quick and I'm gonna show you how to make one of these all right, to keep this video short, I've already done all the tooling, antiquing, and die work on our front panel. You can certainly go find videos on our YouTube channel on uh, in-depth instruction on tooling and, and our finish process. This is a piece of French calf that we got from C. Lloyd Leather out in El Paso, Texas, and it is phenomenal leather to work with. It makes a really, really nice bag. You can also make this bag completely out of his goat skin, and that's I've uh, made three or four of these bags like that, and it works out really well. And here we're going to go ahead and get all of our panels cut for the interior and the exterior of the bag and get everything ready to go. Okay, and on this pattern, what you'll notice, I have those little center marks. I've learned to just cut out just a little triangle right there, and that's gonna help line all these pieces up as you begin to assemble the bag. You may see me use those more often on some patterns because that really, really helps instead of using a mark, is just kinda nick that out, especially if you're turning a bag inside out. It really makes it easy to line everything up so that you know you're building the bag completely square and that it looks square when you're done. So now we've gotten all our main panels for the outside of the bag. Now I'm going to cut all my liner pieces. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of some white goat skin. I also got this from C. Lloyd. This stuff is really nice. Again, you can build the entire bag out of goat skin if you'd like to keep the cost down because a French calf is considerably different in price. And here's all our pieces. We've got a tooled front panel, our back panel, our two interior pieces, our two pockets, and then we've got our zipper piece or the center gusset with a zipper in it, as well as our little D hangers. We'll go ahead and pull the blue painter's tape off of here. That's what I used on this 3-4. You're gonna need to do something on that 3-4 ounce when you tool it to keep it from stretching too much because it is very thin. Um, and I went ahead and cut those little nicks on there too for the center line. Now I'm gonna cut out the hole for my zipper. I'm just using a half round 
punch there. Um, if you can make you one of these, it makes the cutting zipper slots a lot easier. You can just sacrifice a number 10 hole drive punch and just grind off half of the hole. That'll make you a half, a half punch there. They probably sell one, but I just made one. I had an extra. But we'll go ahead and cut those out for zippers and get our zippers installed. Now I'm going to use some double sided tape here to put these zippers in. You've seen this in other videos. It's much easier than trying to use glue, but if you don't have any of this, um, you can definitely use glue. It'll, it'll hold it. You're just trying to hold that zipper in place while you sew it. If you need to get some of this stuff, uh, Maker's Leather Supply sells it. I think a lot of other companies sell it as well, but it's very handy, especially for zippers. So we got our zippers installed. Now we're gonna move on to our interior pockets. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. I think it's really nice and it makes it a nice finished look on the inside. But what I like to do is go ahead and skive down to a nice feathered edge uh, about you know three quarters, half inch in, something like that. Uh, and then we're just gonna skive that out really nice so that that top edge will fold and then we'll glue that up and then fold it. I didn't sew them, you definitely could sew them, but that goat skin glues up so nicely. And if you do a good job on your skiving, I don't see any reason, any need to go ahead and sew that. You can definitely just glue it down and it makes a really, really nice refined top edge for those pockets. Here I'm going to go ahead and use our new glue applicator that we've talked about on a Monday briefing before that was sent to us by a friend and um, and that little scraper there to spread that out, that little spreader. I've really enjoyed this. This really works good for applications like this where you're trying to be very careful and works much better than a brush.
So here you can see those little triangles that we cut out. Don't go in there, don't go too far in. You wanna cut them pretty shallow. It's just a mark there so that you can line up center. It makes it really nice when you're trying to center up these parts. So like I said, that's what I'm gonna do there. We're gonna put this pocket on here and go ahead and mark where it goes. This one here is gonna be a double pocket. So we will sew a line down the center of that, of that pocket uh, to that interior liner. And that way we make two separate pockets. And now for our front panel that we tooled, you're gonna wanna go ahead and sky this, even though it's three, four, it's still thicker than the rest of the bag. So you're gonna wanna sky in three quarters of an inch or so, whatever your border is, sky some of that off. It doesn't need to be feather feather, but it needs to be fairly thin because we want, we're want we gonna have to turn this bag inside, or right side out. So you're gonna want that edge along there to be kind of flexible. So let's go ahead and sky some of that off and prepare that real nicely so that we can accomplish that when the bag is finished. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our liner glued to the front panel and we're just gonna put glue around the outside edge. You don't wanna glue the whole thing up and laminate both pieces completely solid. Let those pieces kind of float together and just do along the edge there, all along on that and the liner. All right, so now our glue has had time to set up. We're gonna go ahead and glue our liner to the front panel. And this one's gonna be the liner without the pocket on it. We are gonna add a pocket, but the way we're gonna build it, we can go ahead and add that after we glue this together. The one that has the uh, double pocket where we sewed down the center, that one I like to put on the back side. You can go either way, but I like to have those on the zipper side or the back panel of that. Once you get those glued up, go ahead and trim off any excess. Make sure that all your edges are flush with both pieces because we are gonna use a guide on the sewing machine and we just wanna make sure everything's flush when we're assembling this. So there's our double pocket there. We're just gonna glue that one up to the back panel with the zipper in it. So those are both glued up. Now we'll take our front panel and go ahead and glue that second pocket onto it. Now you wanna be sure that you look at the front of your panel, make sure you're gluing the pocket on the bottom edge of there, you know, so it's not upside down. Just kind of check that and we'll just glue that in place.
All right, so all the panels are ready to go. Now we'll go ahead and fit the gusset with the zipper in it. And this is what I like to do on a lot of my bags. The gusset's a little off. So on the pattern pack, don't, don't assume that gusset is perfect because you need to fit it depending on what material you use, how tight you pull it around the corners. It's gonna change a lot. So what we like to do is glue up, we've done this on other bags. We glue up one edge of the gusset, go ahead and glue up one of the panels and we'll go ahead and fit this find center where we need to sew them together where it's going to overlap and that way we know it's right for the bag we're building i'll do this on every single bag that i build um, i don't trust measurements when it comes to gussets i like to fit them so we'll start right there in the center where those little nick marks are and we'll just work that around to the bottom side where that second nick is where the center line is and we'll mark each side of that gusset that'll tell us how we where we need to sew so that we can get this uh, bound together and make one solid gusset Okay, so just like I just did just a minute ago on the other side, we'll go ahead and mark the center line, or mark, put a mark at center. That's gonna ensure that those two lines are the same. Then we'll take this completely off, and then we'll lay it down and we'll get a square, and we'll draw us a square line off those marks. And that's gonna tell us where this gusset needs to be sewn together, um, mark to mark. And we will go ahead and nick those, just like we did for the center line, so that you can line those up easier at the sewing machine. Now to keep everything thin and even along the bottom, go ahead and take a skive and knife and skive the, uh, the portion past your line. You wanna take it down pretty thin, take it down as thin as you can and that way it doesn't create a big lump when this gusset is installed. Now I'm just gonna line up the uh, cut marks on, on each side, line those up, and we're just gonna sew one line straight down our mark. So now our gusset's sewn together. We know it's the right length. We've sewn on our line. So now we'll just take these, and I like to take a hammer and just kind of tease them down there, just kind of tap to get it to where it's kind of as flat as we can. And we'll mark that, glue those tabs down, and then we'll sew a line on each side of this juncture where they come together. And that's gonna make a really nice finished uh, connection there in that gusset.
So you can see there, we just sewed right alongside where we where that where that uh, seam is. Makes a really nice finished piece. Now we'll take the a uh, D. That's a one inch D. I got those at Ohio Travel Bag. You can certainly find them there. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take these D hangers and skive down um, pretty well. You want you want some strength there, so you don't want to take them down paper thin, but you want to skive them nice to where they don't create a lump while we're sewing this bag together. So you want to go ahead and take those uh, those tabs and just skive them down a little bit. So now we'll set those tabs off to the side and let that glue dry. And while that's drying, we'll go ahead and uh, start applying glue to our gusset. With the zipper in it there, we'll go ahead and just add a little glue. We're gonna glue this up to the front panel first and uh, go ahead and get it glued in and where it needs to be. And then we'll go ahead and sew that and set our gauge or our guide on our sewing machine. And that'll get us ready to go ahead and get this bag assembled. So while that glue is drying, we'll go ahead and grab our tabs. That glue's set up and ready to go. We'll just slip our D's in there, fold this over and glue it down tight. We are gonna sew these on the machine. Um, you may or may not need to sew these. I decided to sew them because they're gonna stick out a pretty good ways from, from where they're actually attached. And so I didn't want the glue to break loose over time and that D kind of waller around in there. So um, I decided to sew them. Um, they're a little tricky to sew just because I've got a roller foot on the machine. So, but uh, they worked out really well. But, Go ahead and get those ready to go and we'll get them sewn. So there's our D hangers. We're gonna go ahead and just set those off to the side because we'll glue those in when we put the gusset on the back panel. Right now we're gonna do the front panel first. So you're gonna find your where your zipper is, find those little center line nicks, and we'll go ahead and line that up with the one on the front panel and just work our way around. Now I like to work from the center out, so we'll glue that down, go around each corner, headed towards the bottom, then we'll line this, the bottom center up and then work back towards those bottom left and right corners. So that gusset's glued up, it's ready to be sewn. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, a little piece of gum rubber. You can find this at some craft stores. Um, Aaron at Maker's Leather Supply may start carrying it here pretty soon. Just handy to remove any kind of glue, especially on finished leathers. All 
Okay, so we're here at the Cobra Class 4. I do have a size 23 needle in there and 207 thread. I've put the gauge on there and we're gonna kind of try to get this set where I want it. And I kind of have the gauge a little bit away and I get my first needle in just to kind of see where I want to be along the edge. And then we'll tighten the, gust, the uh, gauge down and that'll be set. We will leave it set like that until we get this bag completely sewn. That way, each time we sew the gusset on the front and the back panel, they'll be sewed in the same distance inside. Um, and don't be scared to get in there a little ways. Don't try to sew right along the edge. Sometimes that can be a little, little trickier. But once you get the gauge set and you're ready to sew, you just sew all the way around. Be careful in your corners. Make sure everything stays glued together and you should be fine. So now we got that sewn. What I like to do is just kind of peek in there and make sure that I, I don't have any stitches showing or something weird happening or maybe I sewed too far in or too far out. I always just kind of like to look in there. Now we'll go ahead and get on the sander. I'm gonna take a lot of material off on this power sander because I, I don't want, you don't want a lot past the stitches because it's, it could create a lump and be a little bit harder to make a nice edge or a nice seam. So I'm gonna take quite a bit off. If you don't have a power sander, you can definitely try to cut that or trim that with a knife and then sand it by hand. Um, but this makes it really nice to be able to take off just the right amount of material. So you can see how much more narrow that is past the stitches. Now I'm gonna take a Berry King number two edger and this works really good on this material to uh, really cut that edge off nicely because I want to take off a, as much material as I can without getting into my stitches. Again, just to make that seam kind of kind of nice and clean once we turn the bag right side out. Now, usually once I do something like this, I can't wait until it's done to see what it's gonna look like. So I'm just turning it out. You don't need to waste time turning it out right now at this point. I'm just doing it just because I wanna see how how close I got with my tool, tooling border and making sure that that's on there even. And, and I just kinda of wanna get a glimpse of the bag because this is the first one I've done that's actually tooled up with some nice leather and things. So I just wanted to kinda of check it out. But that's kinda of what your seam's gonna look like once you get it done. All right, so I'm flipping the bag back where it's supposed to be so we can install it on the back panel. Uh, one thing I wanna mention is be sure that you undo or unzip the zipper on this bag before you sew it completely up by putting the back panel on because if you don't, you will not, hard, it'll be really hard. I've done it, it's just really hard to get that zipper open from the underside. So be sure you've got that zipper um, open when you put this bag together or at least before you glue the back panel in place. Um, because it can be it can be a booger if you if you sew this bag up with that zipper closed here We're gonna put a little bit of glue where those D hangers are gonna go and we're gonna go ahead and glue those in place And that way they're ready and then we'll be ready to glue up the gusset uh, and then glue it to the back panel
right, we're all glued up and ready to go. Don't forget to open your zipper on the bag before you glue it together. I'm telling you, you'll be really upset if you don't. Um, and then be sure you glue the panels, you know, top to top, that kind of thing. Make sure you don't have one upside down. It's pretty simple at this point to be sure that doesn't happen, but always check. Again, we're gonna start in the middle at the top, lining up those nicks, work our way left and right through the corner, down the sides, and then we'll line up the center along the bottom nick there, we'll line that center up and then work towards the corners. And that's gonna ensure that the bag is put together square. If you, if you do it any other way, I found that it'll always have a twist in it or you'll have one panel kind of skewed a little bit from the other one. And this way it kind of keeps everything square as long as you've worked from square from the beginning. All right, the zipper is open on the bag. We are gluing this, our, it's glued together. We're gonna go ahead and sew it. You wanna be sure you're sewing from the gusset side, not the panel side, so that you can make those round corners. If you sew it the other way, um, you will fight those corners a lot more. So you always want the gusset up or you know, sewing from inside the gusset there. Uh, just something, something that I've noticed on some bags, if you try to do it the other way, sometimes it can get really, really complicated on those corners. All right, so I've already sanded the other side, the side we just sewed. I sanded it the same way I did the front panel, and now we're just gonna go ahead and edge all the way around there. Again, trying to take off a pretty good amount of material so that it's a nice rolled little edge, and that way when we flip this bag, it'll, the seams will look nice and clean. All right, everything's ready to go. This is the moment of truth. We're gonna try to flip this bag. One recommendation is just take your time. Start in a corner, work your way up. Um, just be tender with it. Try not to just force it and wrestle it around because I have broken the zippers before or torn the uh, seam right there where the zipper sews in. Just kind of start in that corner and just keep working and folding and trying to push through in that corner right there where that zipper is separated. I've torn those before, so just kind of be careful. It'll go once it gets in the right position and everything gets where it needs to be. It'll, it'll just pop right out, as you'll see here in just a second. It, it'll, it'll go through there. Um, but when you get frustrated and you start just mashing around and wrestling, that's usually when you tear something. And we've got a lot of time in this bag so far, so we don't want to do that. Now we've got it out, inside out, we'll go ahead and just kind of work those seams, push it and pushing it out and kind of, you know, using your fingers to kind of just dress those seams up a little bit, make sure that they're nice. Um, make sure they look good. Keep an eye out for any kind of rogue glue that may be sticking out. You can catch that with that gum rubber and clean that up. Um, it's another thing when you're gluing this up, try not to get too crazy with the glue. Uh, we need it to stick, but we don't want it oozing out of the corners here because it can, it can waste a lot of time trying to clean all that up. So I like to spend a little bit of extra time here and just kind of working on those seams and trying to dress them up a little bit and making sure the bag is square and kind of just making sure everything's where I want it and, and checking the zippers and making sure that they track correctly. 
and then kind of just pushing those seams out. That's the main deal when you do them like this, especially without welting or even with a welting or a piping. Um, you've sometimes got to, uh, you know, just spend a little time just trying to dress them up a little bit so that they all look smooth. But that's the bag itself is done. So now we'll move on to the strap. So here I've just got our side of French uh, calf here and I'm going to go ahead and just straight edge a portion of it. I only need a certain length on there for the strap and the strap will depend on the person that's going to use the bag and how they're going to wear the bag if they're going to wear it around their waist or around their crossbody kind of deal. Um, then you want to kind of check that that measurement and see what's going to work best for your customer or your, or your goals there. But I'm going to strip a piece of one inch and then another little piece of one inch and then a piece of uh, probably inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, something like that, just something a little wider to use as a liner. You could definitely use veg tan here and do an unlined, just kind of belt strip if you wanted to, whatever you prefer here for the strap. Okay, so our strap and our little buckle hanger are completed and we'll go ahead and put a bag punch in there and mount this buckle. You can use whatever buckle you want. You can lace these straps together. There's a lot of fun different ways you can make the, um, like I said, the strapping on this bag. Um, but what I'm going to do is just do keep it kind of simple and we're just going to do a one inch buckle. I did get that buckle from Ohio Travel Bag as well. It's a really nice antique brass buckle. I think it works really well. And then I'm going to attach the bag, the buckle, everything with Chicago screws so that in case my wife decides she wants a different strap or she wants a different buckle or whatever it might be, we can just take those Chicago screws out and I don't have to cut any rivets and destroy the strap that's currently there. So we're just going to go ahead and use these little three eighths. I think they're three eighths or quarter inch uh, Chicago screws here, but you could attach this, like I said, however you would like.
and that bag is finished. All right, guys, so that's making the crossbody fanny pack style purse. Best name I could come up with, I'm sorry. Like I said, I didn't think the fanny pack was gonna be something that would ever make its way back into style and fashion, but apparently that's where we're at. And so anyway, I'm really happy with this bag. I think it's a really neat a neat little purse. Um, I think it's gonna be a popular item. It'll probably be a great gift item, a great Christmas idea. And like I said, uh, if you make one of these all out of goat skin, they're not really super expensive. This one here, like we said, is made out of actual uh, French calf that I got from Seloy Leather out of El Paso. And this is the first project I've ever made using the French calf. And it was just really, really nice to mess with, really nice to work with. I really liked it. Um, and the bag has some real good body to it. It's a little heavier than I originally made the very first one of these um, because that French calf is just a tick thicker than the goat skin is. But still, it went together really good. You've got a, a good amount of storage in this bag for being as small as it is. You've got another zipper here on the back for some space to put maybe some keys or receipts or whatever. Um, I just think it's a really, really unique little thing. Um, and like I said, you can change this strap up. You could actually tool the strap. You can do a number of different things with this little bag. Um, I've actually got another one here that I put together that's uh, called it the Green Monster. It's just kind of <laughs> turned out green. I had some green goat skin and I wanted to kind of come up with something that might be a little bit different. Went ahead and made this. Um, this one here, I went ahead and lined with green as well. So it's the same inside and outside. That's a fun thing with these kind of little bags you can really change them up and accessorize and uh, put different straps on them and things like that so if you were going to a show like say a, a little market days or some type of uh, trade show where you're going to set up a booth you could make up a dozen of these uh, little bags with not too terrible investment in material and then you could make a bunch of different straps and bags and then just mount them on here and uh, you could allow people to kind of coordinate them however they wanted to. But bag goes together really well. The pattern pack is uh, available. There's a digital and a printed version. This one's not as large as our, uh, like our rifle scabbard or our rifle slings or any of that. It's not the three foot by four foot, but it is uh, like 20 something by 30 something, I think. It's, it's pretty good size. So it is a large format print. So if you are in the United States, please buy the printed version and we will mail that right out to you. Then you don't have to worry about taking it somewhere and having it printed. Um, if you're overseas or out of the United States and you wanna purchase that, we do offer the digital version as well. There's links to each of those below. Just be sure you're picking the, the correct one that you need um, because like I said, you're not gonna be able to really print this out on your own printer, but it's a good pattern pack. It's got six different floral tooling patterns in there that you can choose from. I even put some tooling patterns for the strap. Um, you could definitely go through and use some of the belt patterns if you've gotten some of those from us in the past, you could use those belt patterns and make this strap actually one and a half inches wide instead of one inch and give you a little bit more room, maybe do a little bit more artwork and painting and that kind of thing. But it's got all those in there. If you want to get that, links are down in the description. I appreciate you guys and we'll see y'all in the next project video.